During the frigid Cold War, governments were heavily focused on space, sports, socioeconomic, and arms races. However, one of the worst nightmares for both sides was the constant threat of espionage, which jeopardized all their advancements and the potential victory in this ideological conflict between the Eastern Bloc and the Western Bloc. Nevertheless, this very threat drove technological development to unprecedented levels, urging scientists from the involved countries to create new and better tools that would help them safeguard their dark secrets more effectively. Today, we will delve into the history of what is considered by many as a flying building and has gone down in history as the world's largest helicopter. During this espionage nightmare, by 1960, the Soviet government found itself outpaced by the constant high-altitude flights of American pilots who, following a very repetitive pattern, managed to detect and locate the silos where intercontinental ballistic missiles were stored. Lonely railroads and desolate roads that seemed to lead nowhere were the clues that the pilots followed with the sole purpose of revealing the nuclear secrets hidden in the most remote and inhospitable areas of Siberia. Seeing their security compromised, the Soviets desperately sought a method to transport 25-ton nuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles as discreetly as possible. Due in large part to the geographic and climatic conditions of their environment, one of the best solutions was aerial transportation. So they turned to the Mill Moscow helicopter plant, which already had a good reputation for creating heavy transport helicopters in search of solutions. When it came to weaponry and military machinery in the Soviet Union, size did matter. That's why the Mill Experimental Design Bureau was instructed to develop a helicopter capable of carrying at least 25 tons, covering some detailed specifications, such as a cargo hold dimension, similar to that of the popular Antonov N-22 aircraft. To meet the need for more space, this model was constructed based on a fuselage that was highly similar to that of a commercial aircraft. With a length of 28 meters, a width of 4.4 meters, and a height of 4.4 meters, the cargo hold of the Mill V-12 project could be adapted for the transport of combat material or machinery, as well as serve as a civilian transportation with a capacity of 196 seats. Instead of seeking to innovate and create an entirely new aircraft from scratch, Soviet engineers opted for financial prudence, reusing some parts and components from other already tested helicopters. Therefore, they used the transmission and rotor systems of the Mil Mi-6 helicopter, one of the largest at that time. To ensure sufficient power, this new helicopter was equipped with two rotors rotating in opposite directions, aiming to achieve the greatest stability. Instead of using a tandem configuration, popular in American helicopters, Soviet engineers decided to mount the rotors transversely, creating an appearance similar to conventional airplane wings. Apart from giving it a look that was half airplane and half helicopter, it facilitated stationary flight maneuvers and provided greater maneuverability at high speeds. By 1965, the construction of a prototype had already begun. Two years later, in 1967, this prototype had completed its first flight test, which resulted in failure, leading to a second test that yielded positive results. Multiple subsequent tests successfully demonstrated that the required demands were largely exceeded. The V-12 was capable of carrying maximum loads of up to 40 tons, reaching maximum speeds of 260 kilometers per hour and a service ceiling of 3,500 meters. However, piloting an aircraft of this type was an extremely demanding task, and controlling this helicopter required a complete crew. Divided into two levels, the control centers were managed by a pilot, a co-pilot, and a flight engineer in the lower cockpit, while the upper cockpit housed a navigator, a radio operator, and an electrical engineer. This led to the creation of specialized training programs for new pilots, due to the complex control systems with which it was developed. The success of this project prompted its manufacturers 
to showcase the helicopter at the 1971 Paris Air Show. Its triumphant arrival was accompanied by eight world records, of which three are still in effect, including the lifting of 40 tons of payload to over 2,250 meters in altitude. Its astonishing qualities and dimensions left spectators in awe, unequivocally concluding that the Soviet Union had created the largest helicopter of the time. However, it also left those curious about the true purpose of its creation in suspense. By the time the prototypes had provided enough information for a thorough analysis to begin mass production, the V-12 project had already lost its primary purpose. Essentially, the problem for which it was created no longer existed. Between 1959 and 1971, a couple of events led to the cancellation of this project. Firstly, the United States had already put its first spy satellite into orbit. In just one day, this satellite was able to photograph more Soviet territory than all previous spy plane missions combined, making it extremely difficult to discreetly transport or store intercontinental missiles developed up to that time. Secondly, by the 1970s, the Soviets were already developing a new generation of intercontinental missiles. These had much smaller dimensions, small enough to be transported by trucks, which could evade spy reconnaissance simply by changing their location. Finally, the only two prototypes manufactured, in addition to retaining several mechanical flaws and problems, were considered too large and cumbersome to offer utility beyond their original purpose. In a realistic scenario, Situations rarely arose where a helicopter capable of carrying more than 40 tons or 200 passengers was required, considering that this was primarily a solution for medium and short distances. The first prototype manufactured remained at the Mill Helicopter Plant in Russia, while the second prototype was donated to the Central Museum of the Air Force for public exhibition just 50 kilometers away from Moscow.